Hello and welcome to the show brought to you by Risen. We are your hosts, Jeff and Rogelio, and today we are joined by Cynthia Sandoval. She hails from New York. She specializes in digital advertising strategy and consulting, and she focuses on Google ads and Facebook ads for e-commerce companies. She's worked with the likes of Damon John from Shark Tank, speaks to groups internationally, and she's passionate about helping companies see real results. That's me. <laughs> Fantastic. Welcome. 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 Cynthia, we're so excited to have you on the show. And, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about to, today about the importance of aligning your branding and your marketing efforts. And it sounds like something really simple that businesses do, but more often than not, those two things are often disconnected. So before we get into how to align those two things together, so they work more in tandem, why don't we start off by just setting up some, some foundational content for our listeners. Can you talk to me about what does good branding actually look like? Um, I think there's a common misconception with branding where we think about the logo. We think about the colors that you're using on your website or on your packaging and things like that. Not to say that that's not important, but that's more brand identity. Overall branding is really how are you positioned in the overall landscape, right? How are you different? What is the messaging that you're, um, showcasing to your ideal customer that really sets you apart, that really hooks them in? So that's, for me, how I look at branding as an advertiser, as a performance marketer. Lots of people see branding as a very top of funnel kind of effort. And my goal as an advertiser, where I deal with, you know, bottom of the funnel type conversions and purchases and signups and all that, I'm looking to bridge that gap. And it all starts with having a good understanding of your customer, being positioned correctly in the landscape, tying all those efforts all the way down to your advertising. I think that was uh, probably one of the best answers I've heard uh, on that uh, question. Wow, I'll take uh, it. <laughs> yeah. But we want to try to understand uh, what are the really the keys to success, right, to quality advertising. So what, what would you say those, those general keys are? I think there's a, there's, there's a couple of ones, but if I were to boil it down and condense it into just three, the first one would be understanding. So I'm thinking of it as an advertiser, like where I'm onboarding clients. So it's, on, it's understanding your client's business, business, like the back of your hand, really understanding their business model. Obviously, if you're listening to this and you're a business owner, you, you know that pretty nicely. And then second is understanding your entire competitive landscape inside and out, understanding what your competitors are doing you know, in order for you to, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, but essentially just bridge the gaps, you know, do what they're doing, but better in a more creative way. And also understanding your customer avatar. So when I'm, uh, I don't want to go too much in a rabbit hole here, but when I onboard a client, I almost think of it as uh, method acting where I'm really like getting, I'm getting a super deep understanding. Like I'm getting creepy. <laughs> understanding of your, your customer. Like I want to see what the, the journey is like from end to end, you know, um, how, how, uh, like looking at their overall social profiles, even like looking at the people that follow, like all of it. Right. So having that deep understanding allows you to target the right person, right. At the right time and with the right messaging. And that's really my approach to advertising, right person, right time, right messaging. And what were we going to say? Oh, I was going to ask you the, you know, kind of the bringing in to talking about alignment and branding and why so often they're disconnected. Do you have kind of a feel in working with some of the clients that you've had in the past, why those two things end up being so disconnected so often? I think you, I think, you know, it's like you can go down such a rabbit hole with PPC and paid media or Facebook ads and Google ads. There's so many moving parts. There's so many things to tinker with, you know, it, it can get extremely, extremely um, intense. So what a lot of advertisers do, and unfortunately agencies do, is they silo their efforts. They focus, like they'll report, you know, on very, they'll report on metrics that aren't really moving the needle for the business. They'll report on things like bid adjustments. They'll report on things like, um, let's say, you know, we're, we're focusing on increasing the bid on this one keyword, you know, when in reality, when I'm reporting, like, obviously I'm giving you that baseline. So you understand, you know, what your money is doing in the machine. But my goal is to bring that, bring clarity and bring context to all of that. 
okay, so what does this really mean? Is this, how, how impactful is this? And what can we do to be impactful, you know? So the reason why people get really siloed in there is because, let's be honest, Google Ads is a beast. And so is Facebook sometimes. But I think Google is like the mecca of all beasts because you have YouTube advertising, you have display, you have, uh, you have uh, discovery ads now, you have shopping. So it can get really intense. <laughs> With that intensity, just it, it comes to mind, or at least in my mind, like where do I start? Like where, where should companies start in aligning their brand and advertising? Um, that's a great question. And that's what I get hit with a lot. Um, I think it all comes down to what are your objectives? What are your goals? And then figuring out how paid media could help that if at all. So for example, something I always say is like, if you're coming to an agency, if you're coming to maybe a freelancer, a media buyer, whatever the case is, have clear and, um, have smart goals, you know, have them be measurable and uh, bound by time. So I, something like, you know, I'm looking at, in order to do that, you really need to know your numbers, right? So in order to do that, you're going to say like your overall cost per acquisition is X mm -hmm. with my PPC efforts. I want to bring that down or mm -hmm. I want to bring up overall profit uh, by X amount, you know, which would be like if you're, I, I specifically work with e-commerce, so it would be your return on ad spend, your ROAS. That's what we look at a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I want to bring up my ROAS um, and then, you know, what everyone wants is that I want to scale and also be profitable. That's at the end of the day with what they want. And then it's kind of my job to like break that down and give them a bit of a reality check. Like this is not possible because of the landscape or this is possible and we can do this by X amount. I can't promise anything, but we can work very hard by doing X, Y, and Z. Um, I think that answers your question. Yes. Just, just how, just, it all comes down to your objectives, really. Yeah. Like, what are you trying to do? And getting super specific with that. Because sometimes advertising doesn't always solve that. Mm. You know, sometimes you want to leverage advertising with your organic measures. Uh, maybe you just want to start off with remarketing, which is just capturing um, traffic that you're getting into your website organically and mm -hmm. just closing the lead or closing yeah. the sale, you know? Sure. It really sounds like you're talking about paying attention to the entire process. It's not about just drafting something and looking at it periodically every six months. There has to be continual checking in on what are we doing to brand ourselves? How does that line up with our goals? What do our metrics look like? It has to be something that's done on a continual basis, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially like if, if uh, for example, we're in Q4 now, so we're in the thick of it. So things that work now are not going to work in Q1. That's just mm -hmm. the reality of it, right? So, yep. you know, usually people spend a significant amount, uh, significantly less in advertising, but they kind of rework their messaging and they rework some foundational things. And we have, uh, maybe we focus and shift to um, building up our, our remarketing list, building up our audiences with cheap traffic and, you know, uh, showcasing uh, new messaging and, and new ways of uh, talking about our product and kind of playing this longer term game so that when we have our next really big sale or we know in our landscape, like conversion rates go up by like, I don't know, all the way up, just an insane amount, we capture them really nicely. Mm -hmm. Do you see any companies that are doing this really well, Cynthia, where there's just that strong synergy between their branding message and their advertising efforts? Yeah. You know, I, I was thinking about that before. And I would say one of my favorite um, companies right now is probably Casper. And <laughs> I've heard actually their mattresses aren't really that great, but every <laughs> time I see an ad, I want to buy it. And what they do so well. So, this, you know, what I mentioned before, like with branding, right? Um, Branding, when I think about branding, I think about how the customer really feels about the product or service. So what they do with their messaging across the board, where they do with their positioning is really like, especially on their website, they have a, this reviews page. And I actually show that reviews page. I think it's like casper.com slash reviews. I'm like, I'm always on it because mm -hmm. I show that page and I, and I tell my clients, I'm like, this is what we want to model. You know, you want to showcase the impact of what it is that you provide. And you want to share these stories, you know, so they do such a great job at sharing those stories, sharing like um, user generated content, uh, testimonials and things like that. And their messaging, and they also show like um, the features of the mattress and, and not, not just, just the features, but how it makes you feel. 
Mm. Yeah. So, and I think that that showcased not really nicely uh, on their social media, on their website, and especially in, in their ads, they really drive it home with some kind of promo. They show all that visually and then they have a strong call to action, which is right now, it's probably a holiday sale. Yeah. And to your point, like they know exactly, you know, what they're selling and how to get across the benefits. And they just, they really understand the connection between the two. The first one that comes to my mind when I think about excellent synergy between advertising and branding, I always think of Red Bull. They've been doing it for 25 years and they just do an amazing job at selling a lifestyle instead of a product. Mm -hmm. Because when you come, when it comes down to it, you're drinking carbonated water with some sucralose in it. Really, when it comes down to it, It cost them like two pennies to make it, right? But everybody uh, knows the brand. No, I was going to say that sucralose, that that uh, that carbonated water is what gets me through all the best advertising campaigns. <laughs> just powers me through. <laughs> I appreciate Absolutely. them. <laughs> I, I'm not just plugging them. I'm also a client. I do love <laughs> Red Bulls. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I think of them whenever I think of that strong connection between advertising and branding. They know exactly who their audience is. They know how to reach their audience and they tailor all their efforts towards doing that. Uh, you know, they were the, one of the first ones to, to shift their advertising efforts towards event branding, as opposed to trying to use mass media to push their product. You know, you think about like getting involved in the uh, extreme sports category in the mm-hmm. late 90s. Nobody was doing that. And then yeah. you see Red Bull on the scene and they became so synonymous with that, uh, that lifestyle that you drink a Red Bull if you're in that arena. Yeah. I mean, their I TikTok's full of, yeah, their TikTok is full of videos of people jumping off like mountains and airplanes and all kinds of things. So yeah, you associate that right with the brand. Yeah. With their branding, they have a lot of like, um, there's a, like a, I think it's a Yiddish word, like chutzpah. They have a lot of uh, just, they're courageous in their advertising. So when mm-hmm. everyone's zigging, there's, they zag and then they showcase that through their actual advertising efforts, um, branding all the way down to advertising. And when you're able to, so when I talk about like brand driven performance marketing, what I'm really saying is build an omni-channel approach. Don't just put all your eggs in one basket. Instead, like understand what each and every part really plays and have them all play together instead of siloing your efforts. You know, like you were mentioning how Red Bull really dipped into the, like the event space or the first people to do that. I'm pretty sure there's ways in which they can leverage, you know, advertising for that and just you know, showcasing or, or ad advertising specific events in people's areas, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's just like a piece that plays into this overall funnel. It's a word that we hear a lot, but I don't know if people really understand the meaning of it. <laughs> Agreed. You know, it's a very complex discussion that we're having and it's hard to nail it down to general specifics for people to, you know, to use, but it's the overall idea of making sure that these two silos combine into one. And, you know, just as a follow-up, Cynthia, you know, if you're, if you're speaking to that small business owner, maybe that decision maker at a growing organization, do you have some tips? Maybe like, where do I start if I don't think these two things are connecting and I want them to, and I want to do a better job of making my efforts reap results. Where do I get going? I think it all starts with measuring because what you measure, you manage. And that's something that's engraved in everything I do as a performance marketer. Anyone as a a good marketer in 2020 is always measuring and and analyzing things based on data. Yep. So it all starts with measuring what's what in order to figure out what is actually moving the needle and what you can build on top of that. In, In the digital space, you want to make sure that if say if you're in e-commerce, right? I, I oftentimes like I'll get on a free consultation with a client with a with a prospect, and there's just some things that they're not measuring at all, and mm-hmm. they don't have a pixel on the back end of their website, so we don't really know the kinds of people that are uh, coming to their website, and that's not ideal, right? Um, right. They don't have enhanced e-commerce set up on their back ends, which is where we can start tracking, you know, actual e-commerce conversion rates. Uh, we can start tracking revenue through analytics. And when you track revenue through analytics, you can see which channel is generating revenue. There's nuances to that. And you can get super nerdy when you talk about attribution. Mm-hmm. But I, I won't go down that rabbit hole. But still, you just want to have some kind of pulse. You want to know which, which what's really working here. you know. And then once you have that initial pulse, then you can dig deeper 
and say like, okay, net, then you can build like a real omni-channel approach. You're getting a ton of traffic from SEO. So then you want to pair that up with a remarketing campaign on Facebook or on Google or something, you know? You know, I think you're hundred percent right. And there's still that mindset that I think is pervasive where we're thinking 30 years ago, man, I'm getting old, but you know, it's not enough just to spend 10 grand on a commercial and be like, Hey, my commercial was on at seven o'clock after this TV episode. That's not enough. That's, that's empty advertising is what we think of today because there's no way to really track what you're getting back for those efforts. Exactly. So when you have something like when I say top of funnel, I'm saying like something like, uh, let's say like your social media efforts on or organic social media efforts, or say you, you wrote a really great piece of content and you're getting a ton of traffic to your website organically. Like you can immediately think of a strategy just from there when you're measuring it accordingly. Right. This, this, this article right here, uh, for example, I have a client that um, they sell ballistic helmets and in their field, uh, there's a bit of a competition, but they're specifically niched and positioned very nicely. They're, they're at a price point where people can afford like the common person, this common civilian. And so what they do is they have this comparison page, right? And they get a ton of traffic there. And that's obviously someone that's performing a ton of research. They're looking at other competitors and obviously they're a little biased, but what I do is make sure that everyone that's going to that landing page or that blog post, I'm then retargeting them with a direct to sell ad. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I have like a little bit of line of messaging, you know, like something along the lines, like researching for the best blah, 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 blah. You know, maybe this will help you incentivize with this coupon code or something like that, like super direct to sell because they're already warmed up, you know. How can our listeners connect with you after the show? You could find me on Instagram, on Twitter, um, at, at the Sin Sandoval. That's my handle across the board. You can also find me on my website. You can quick uh, CynthiaIsMarketing.com. You can also look me up on YouTube. I'm starting some efforts up there you know, trying to kick that up a little bit. Um, or you could simply just uh, email me at C at Cynthia's and uh, we can chop it up. Awesome. So to our listeners, we'll make sure to include that information in the show notes. That way you have an easy way to connect with Cynthia. If you have some more questions about where to start or how to improve aligning your branding and your online advertising efforts, she's the lady to talk to. So overall, Cynthia, before we wrap up, one question we like to ask our guests just to get the futurist uh, opinion, uh, because yeah. we are a growth marketing for Martian show. We like to look into the future, into the, into the universe of where things are going. Do you have any thoughts or ideas on where advertising is going in the next five to 10 years? What is it going to look like to reach consumers, to be able to connect with them in the next decade? Hmm. You know, that's a really great question. And um, I think a lot uh, so as advertisers, things are transitioning to voice. So how people are searching are a little bit more conversational. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes it so much different, but voice is definitely the next wave of things when it comes to search marketing. And also something that there's like buzz about is Google. So Google is known for keyword-based targeting, keyword-based, uh, you know, through search terms and things like that, whereas Facebook is audience-based targeting. Google has also a lot of audience targeting uh, options and they're getting more and more popular. And then with the introduction of smart campaigns and smart bidding, like with smart shopping, we can't see any search term data. We kind of just leave it up to the Google gods to figure it out. And we give Google the right da data. That's our jobs now is to really steer the ship strategically. Yeah. So overall advertising uh, in, uh, in the future for Martians, I guess, <laughs> we're going to see a lot of, I believe keyword less targeting. We're gonna really leverage machine learning, um, a ton of smart campaigns, and we're gonna see the rise of more um, creative marketers take uh, take hold. You know, lots of creative thinkers, lots of even you know branding type strategists can now move into the performance marketing space. So that's that's how I think things are changing. We're gonna start valuing creativity a lot more in this space. Lovely. I mean, that's, that's great news for, I know a lot of people in that space that, that they would be excited to hear that. It's great news for me. Yeah. <laughs> I hate stats. <laughs> the, the more creative we can be in our outreach, I think the better we can build those relationships, which is the overall goal. It feels less mechanical. It feels more personal. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. hundred percent. 
Cynthia, we want to thank you so much for being on the show. No, I want to thank you guys. Thank you so much. This is an awesome podcast and, and a great opportunity. So thank you.